Yeah, I got my very first scar cutting apart a land speeder Star Wars toy. <laughs> I wanted to modify the land speeder, and I learned exactly what an exacto knife will do to you should you use it wrong. Oh man! Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to towards your buddy, not your body, and you know, never cut the bagel towards your throat. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just when you thought we'd been hiatus into oblivion, they bring us back. The Talking About Cars podcast with Randy Cardoon, that be me, and co-starring Hot Rod Bob Beck, that be him. And Hi there. they're bringing us back. And uh, Bob, I got to tell you, it's good to be back. We've yes. been a few, about a year and a half or so since we went into quote unquote hiatus. Hibernation. Uh, yes, hibernation. And we'd like to thank the folks at uh, PowerTube TV for bringing us back, dusting us off, and putting us together for a group of another bunch of really fun shows. Uh, yeah. You know, it's going to be basically the same format in the sense that we're all looking for car stories. We're all looking for people who have great stories to tell about collecting cars. Yeah, we're going to bring in some people, knowledgeable, uh, some people you may not have heard about before, or you've heard about them, but you haven't really been able to get a, a personal connection with them. And that's what we're going to try and bring to you. Again, it's been a lot of fun. What, what's been going on that you may have missed over the last year and a half? We have relocated from Southern California to Washington State, where there is quite a car culture up here. And what we'll do is from time to time, we will kind of share with you what's going on up here and also bob will be in southern california and he'll be sharing what's going on there i think we envisioned a uh, kind of a he'll be at bob's big boy and i'll be at a place up here in seattle that's kind of like bob's big boy uh seattle tacoma area and we'll try and show you what different car people are collecting and what it's like being in uh, different car venues yeah the car culture uh, although it's pretty universal some states have a little different twist on it, and uh, we'll twist it even further. That's right. Yeah, gluten-free, it isn't everywhere. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we will we will talk a little bit about that. I don't know when gluten-free became a, a car culture thing, but hey, yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of what's been going on. Now, Bob, yes. tell us a little bit about what you got going, because you're, you're still at Irwindale. I'm still at Irwindale every Thursday night, and now I've just uh, been hired to do the drag racing events at Hot August Nights in Reno. So I'm going to be there in August. I'm going to be doing the uh, race in Lodi coming up shortly. Bakersfield for the Hot Rod Reunion, which they've changed the name now. Uh, it's no longer the Hot Rod Reunion. I'll be in uh, where am I going to be? Beach Bend Raceway in Bowling Green, Kentucky. We're going to be doing another event there for NHRA at the museum. Uh, the Wally Parks Nostalgia Nationals got to come out to that it's going to be fantastic always get a good crowd for that uh but i'll be traveling uh we're coming up on the uh west coast custom show i'll be out there i'm just busy every weekend at a different event and i'm loving it yeah absolutely and i'm getting more and more involved up here uh we're doing some stuff with the lemay museum up here in fact that's where two of my cars are located um and they have a place there where you can actually store your cars there, which I always thought was really kind of neat because, you know, you can store your cars anywhere. And a lot of people store them in, in truck trailers and some places yeah. in a storage facility. I like the idea of putting a car somewhere and then having people like walk by it as like a museum. I mean, I think that's kind of cool to see your car in a museum. And, and I'll be honest, none of my cars are like super show cars. They're uh, kind of there. But, you know, if you can do that, that that's kind of neat. So I'll be involved with more stuff up here in the Pacific Northwest, and I'll update you as that stuff comes along. So, again, don't forget to uh, join us for the show. We'll be new episodes every Wednesday on PowerTube TV, our new home, and we should uh, have a good time. I think we will have a good time. Randy's got his LeMay Museum to put his stuff in. I got mine right behind me here. Ah, very good. In my garage. So, uh, and there's more to come. There's also some of them missing from this shot. Previously, you just saw the our 1929 Ford Woody station wagon. And then we've got the cars that are behind me as well. So we're going to have some fun. Now, this car behind me, it's not mine. In no. fact, it's not even a car per se. 
And uh, of course, it does include our guest. There he is. Our guest is joining us as soon as we, you know, snap our fingers and uh, he arrives on the scene. So I guess without further ado, yeah. let's get to the show and good. Uh, our first program here on PowerTube TV. And let's go to uh, our guest who appears as soon as we snap our fingers. One, two, three. And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rousseau is joining us right here on the Talking About Cars podcast with me, Randy Cardoon, and that, of course, being Hot Rod Bob Beck. And uh, it is great to have you on the show, Ian. You know, like I said, uh, you uh, we get to talk to one of the most unique car fabricators out there. It is a show that's lasted as long as our show has, if you go back to 2014. So that's very cool. And yes. it always amazing to me that you're like the MacGyver of car fabricators. I don't know if anybody's ever told you that before. Because <laughs> if you think Actually, about it, you take yeah. random parts, you take random cars, you throw in some tube socks and a welder, and the next thing you know, you have art of the automotive variety. And the true story is if you've seen some of the episodes, I've actually been guilty of using a sweatshirt and socks on some occasions. <laughs> well, the there you go, lab. see? But I bet you no one's called you a uh, MacGyver of uh, the car fabricators before. Actually, that is one of my nicknames on other events as well. I kind of just got a way of fixing stuff with uh, bailing wire and duct tape, you know, whatever it mm -hmm. takes. Absolutely. Well, whatever it takes. Last night I was watching the, the episode where you started working on the international tab over. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm just amazed at what you've done with that so far and the fact that it actually exists. The YouTube yeah. content you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I was watching the YouTube show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're lagging a little bit on those episodes because uh, I just acquired an engine. You know, we want to get the drive line established before we go further. So did a little dent repair, some headlight upgrades, and right now the cab is just sitting waiting for us to pick up this engine later this afternoon. What kind of engine? 427 for uh, Chevy. I don't even remember, but I think he said it's bumped up to a 427. A uh, big block. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's a big block. Yeah, the chassis we got was designed for a, a 454 originally, so this should just oh. drop right in. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That that thing is a, a Frankenstein, I guess. What a weirdo, extent. right? Yeah. yeah, but it's neat. It's so weird, it's neat. I mean, that's the thing about it. Yeah, the lady at the uh, wrecking yard, uh, there was a story about that you saw in some of Jamie's videos. What a shame. Well, so many cars went to the crusher. And she was like, she grew up as in this wrecking yard as a little girl. And she's like, this truck always had so much character, blah, blah, blah. Save it. I was like, all right, cool. Very nice. You know, you are your shows have been in many places. And congratulations on now being on the uh, Motor Trend Network. Uh, uh, yeah, that's been, up, I sure. think, relatively recent. Uh, but you were on MAV TV for a long time. And I understand you're going to really be on both in the future, correct? Uh, I'm not sure what the arrangement is with Mav TV, but Motor Trend keeps asking for more episodes. We're filming now, so we're on episode three out of six for this year, which will air late fall, winter. Very good. So, so let's talk a little bit about how this all began. I mean, is growing up, were you also like tearing apart model cars and gluing them back together different ways? How did you get into this? exactly what you described yeah i got my very first scar cutting apart a land speeder star wars toy <laughs> i wanted to modify the land speeder and i learned exactly what an exacto knife will do to you should you use it wrong oh man yeah yeah, yeah. To, towards your buddy not your body and you know never cut the bagel towards your throat exactly <laughs> <laughs> hey, you grew up in the san fernando valley in the sun valley area didn't you no, I grew up in New York. Oh, New yeah. York. Oh. I just landed. I took a leap of faith. I just basically quit my job, sold the farm, and moved out west. Oh, wow. Okay. I read something that you were in Sun Valley. Okay. Yeah, don't read every, don't believe anything you read on the internet. I have two <laughs> wives on the internet. I'm a multimillionaire. I got all <laughs> kinds of stuff. I don't know what this is about on the, yeah, when you Google search my name, but. Yeah, no, I, I grew up in New York and I moved to the San Fernando Valley in 98. Yeah, okay. you went to West Valley High School. Yeah. Is, is that true? No. No, okay. <laughs> Ossining High School graduate, Ossining, New York. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah. what made you come out here? Cars, surfing, skateboards, 
All the okay. magazines came from SoCal. That's why I came here. Ah, uh, good. Uh, you you went to the right place because uh, you're, you're limited in New York because it, just the weather itself. Yeah, and the rust in the cars. I had no concept of how good you guys had it in Southern California. Um, yeah, you, you you normalize it, and uh, by the time I got out here, I, I drove across country twice in my early twenties, and uh, strangely enough, passed this ranch in Mojave a couple times, always looking at it, and I end up living here. It's super super weird scenario. Well, that's cool. Now, what what was the first car you started modifying? Volkswagen Bug seventy two was Grandma's car, and uh, it was all rusty. And I was fourteen. My dad was like, "Hey, your sixteenth birthday is coming up. If you want to drive, you can make this thing work." Okay. I had a funny feeling when he said that, though. He probably meant put some oil in it and let it run, versus the, the what you probably did to it. Oh, I had that engine out in no time for sure. Because like he got me like uh, we, we I had a, I was at a job, but like he did the shopping, so we got a Pontiac Sunbird, <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh no way, this is not me." And the one that got away, an ex girlfriend's dad gave me a '77 Cutlass, super nice oh, okay. car. And I was like, "No, nah, I want a Volkswagen." And yeah, it escalated from there. What did you do to the beat up? Uh, well, it was just mainly rust repair. I worked in a construction company where they had a sheet metal break and I made rocker panels myself at a galvanized tin, all pop riveted. I pop riveted and bondoed everything and it lasted about a year. Until it <laughs> just fell apart. Yeah, I didn't know how to weld until I was about 22. I went, got certified as a welder. Oh, okay. How long did it take for you to get comfortable just ad-libbing a uh, build like you do today if you watch the first dvd we filmed it in 03 and i was green you could see it i was it's like a deer in the headlights so from 03 to 2023 yeah i'm kind of getting the hang of it hey, you've made some wild machines and you and i got to talk about them at a car show a few well, a month or so back but what is your favorite build so far Hands down, Johnny Jalopy's Johnny Five, that mutant VW bus hot rod thing, for sure. Yeah, we talked about that. I was like I'm driving a cab over, but the engine was in front of you. So weird. So weird it was right. <laughs> now, what ended up happening to that vehicle? Uh, it lives up in Canada. The fella, Mark, who uh, was the client, uh, he ended up moving, and he's busy. He bought a property, so they're all three of the vehicles I worked on with him are just in his garage at storage. Yeah, limited driving time up there, too. That's one thing he said. He moved even further north in Canada, and I guess they probably have about two months of summer, I think. Uh, yeah, the further north you move, take it from me, I'm in Washington State. The further north you move, the less sun you have. Yeah, that was a thing in New York also. I just, the gray February through May, I just couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. yeah well you're in you're in sunshine capital right now oh you yeah Mojave, new... california it's on it's a beautiful yeah, day you, you got another foot of sunshine today right yeah exactly. <laughs> okay i know you said that just for me yes <laughs> i did <laughs> yes, thank you thank you so much um ian talk a little bit about uh some of the cars that you've built and especially like the ones for victor and and it's interesting because your show these are the these are like your cast of characters that come in occasionally. They either stimulate your um, creativity or they always give you something that makes you go hmm, and then you just whip up something. Talk a little yeah. bit about how he got involved with the show. Well, Victor's been my client since I first moved here. Uh, I opened a shop, as I mentioned, a leap of faith. I saved some money and I rented a workshop in Sun Valley, and Victor happened to be in Silmar, next neighboring town, and you know, oh, who's the car guy, right? So he comes in and we get to talking and he's been he's been my best client and damn good friend also. Real, real strong supporter of my work. The story of the Packard that you built, that was the first one I saw. And that, the whole story of the build, of the build and then the ending was just amazing to me. Yeah, we did two Packard, Packards, Victor and I. Are you talking on the, the maroon one or the green one? Uh huh. I think you're probably talking about the, the, think, one, the one that looks like a Mercury now. 
Or there's the Merc, there's the Merc Eater, and then there's the Merc Eater Eater. <laughs> well, I, I remember you came to the Road Kings Car Show with uh-huh. one of them. Victor's yeah. Merc was parked alongside it. You were parked, you were close to the front row. Yeah, I never yeah. got to, I didn't get to meet you then, but that's the car that uh, I remember most. Merc and one, uh, sure. yeah. it ended up being yours, if I remember correctly. Well, uh, Victor's uh, number one guy, Craig, he, he owns it now, so okay. it's still in the family. But uh, yeah, he takes it everywhere. So that was, um, yeah, it's still trying to remember. We've done so many projects, but yeah, if you saw the story, we did pretty much everything to that car, fused the the Mercury nose onto the front of it and all the other business. And you're also capable of doing more subtle uh, customized customizations because it, it turned out a high school buddy of mine now owns that Buick Riviera that you put together. Oh really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, he, if, if I'm not mistaken, he works with Victor also, right? Is that is that who we're discussing? Uh, maybe. I know he was doing some other job beforehand. I didn't know he was working with Victor, but um, he bought it from somebody who might have been working for Victor. I oh, so he the fella sold it. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. The yeah. one with the tail light issue. Right. Finally right. got resolved. <laughs> that was interesting. I mean, because you were so exact about what you wanted to do, yet you didn't like completely change over the car you eventually put together a a really uh, best word describe it as a subtle custom yeah yeah and victor's got good taste you know he plays it up for the camera like he's a wild man you know but like his roots are founded in the san fernando valley cruise scene and i think that show you know really really represents the boulevard mentality right that car looks cool now we talked when we were up in your current we talked about your making the bubble canopies you saw gene winfield do it and you figured if he can do it you can do it and that was an extensive uh project because you had to build the bubble the, the oven or whatever you call it to make the bubble expand yeah true story if you watch the show yeah we used uh uh whatever that that kind of stone board that you'd put in the shower walls we made it out of that and some galvanized tin and literally costco barbecue grills true story <laughs> oh. yeah that that's the macgyver part of you is, is definitely yeah. evident in, in most of your shows well, I, was just, I was just thinking you know what could insulate what could hold the heat or reflect the heat so yeah the, the stone board the masonry board the the tin and then uh that big backboard that we inflated the bubble yeah it was all just thinking yeah that's course. something you you do every show and that, that's the part that amazes me is you are true old school the people that founded this hobby and industry did not have engineering degrees they figured it out and you you do that each and every show yeah yeah i love that aspect of it i actually read a book about ed roth and they gave a little hint as to oh well he heated the acrylic in a pizza oven so that's what got the wheel spinning it's like He's making cars in a pizza oven. That's my kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, how many people could make a hot rod out of a boat? Right. And a uh, nice use of the Chrysler uh, taillights. I thought that was interesting. That was all Victor's call. If, when the boat left the shop, I knew I was in for something. And yeah, he <laughs> took it all the way on that. D- describe that a little bit for some of our viewers. Uh, well, it's a speedboat. It's not like a jet boat because it had an outboard engine on it, but it's very much of that style. It's called a sidewinder. Uh, so it looks like the jet boats really, you know, sleek and simple, lightweight. And I put it on, I guess you'd call it like a, uh, maybe a gasser sort of stance. The chassis is a rear wheel drive, rear engine with a V drive, like you'd find in a boat. So it's kind of like the wheelie machines you'd see. And it actually does wheelies, uh, in the show, the engine wasn't hitting on all cylinders. The guy did the heads weird, and now it's running strong, and it pulls the wheels. That's incredible. All right, so you've got what's behind me, which, of course, is your cabana. One of the more recent oh, ones, yeah. Yeah, explain. Now, it isn't like you just took a car and dropped the back of a trailer onto the uh, back of a chassis. Talk a little bit about how the what the, what the story was up behind this. Well, that was one of my big fake outs, especially on social media. I had everybody, you can't drive that thing. You'll never see where you're going. You can't see out the windows, blah, blah, blah. Everybody thought it was going to be a car. And it's actually just a trailer. 
It's the trailer <laughs> frame. And we welded the uh, Dodge front clip with steering onto the trailer frame. So it had four wheels and steered. And there's a barbecue grill under the hood. It's just, it's just. Oh, <laughs> I love that. No, I think that's great. I mean, you could put an engine in it if you just wanted to redo everything, but I, I wouldn't want to drive that. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> I'll pull the pull behind trailer. Yeah, besides, as you can see, there there is no uh, side view mirror. How, you're right. How could you see? No, that I ended work. up putting I ended up putting a couple mirrors on the side just for just for kicks. But yeah, imagine pulling up to a busy intersection and that thing in modern American traffic. It'd be a panic. <laughs> it's purely a display vehicle. You've got to come down to the Murphy Museum. We've got a Studebaker. Someone did that too. Oh, okay. But it drives. That, well, a house car. That's what was yeah. the inspiration. You see it all the time in, in a lot of the a lot of the you know history. They were putting them on Cadillacs, old ambulances, trucks, everything. Yeah, it works. What what's your uh, your your current major project? Well, the V word, Mister Victor's car is over there in the shop, and it's getting picked up today. I was just doing. I you, you see the relationship with Victor. I don't really get into the body, paint, interior, so. I did all the steel fab on this little speedster car. And uh, yeah, that. And then I have a 67 VW Type 3 that I'm getting weird on also. So they're going at the same time. Now, what now I was looking for personal cars. What uh, What do you have in your garage? I get rid of them all. <laughs> I sell everything. I don't keep them. Uh, we have uh, my wife, Jamie's Doom Buggy. That's kind of her daily smash around the desert have fun car uh i have an atc i'll probably never sell but the cars i just i'm always looking for the next now you did a a, a video just the other day about the brakes on that dune buggy yeah yeah part of it we're trying to get this youtube thing like we're, we want to keep it more like we're hanging out on the daily rather than like oh we're making the greatest car in the world and it's all built in one hour we're trying to get away from that format with our youtube make it more personal jamie used the word community it's more like a hangout session so that's what we're up to and yeah do you have a list of cars you would like to work on or is it just based on what you see on any particular day that motivates you a lot of it is what becomes available. Uh, I just finished this 38 Cadillac that uh, I didn't see coming. I built that four by four Pinto and somebody uh, wanted it. And we came to an agreement where I ended up with a 38 Cadillac and started working on that. That's incredible though. That's, that's interesting how that all, was there a, a guy when you first started, somebody that kind of served as your, uh, that got you motivated, somebody that, kind of emulated what you wanted to do or how did that uh, work out? Yeah. Who's your inspiration? All the guys in the magazines, Barris, Roth, Starbird, Winfield, all the guys I read about. Nobody in New York where I grew up was into cars. My dad's not into cars. I had a neighbor. Uh, he had a welder. I had go-karts and mini bikes and I could not kick the habit and he helped me when they got broken. And yeah, that was about it. So you, you came out here, no experience really other than working on your, your Volkswagen, but you had the passion to do this. Yeah. The, boy, did I make some mistakes? We could talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tell us some of the mistakes. What the heck? What was uh, the biggest mistake did you think you made? Uh, well, my first chop top was a disaster. Uh, I decided I was going to chop my VW bus and I chopped it two inches too much. And I didn't realize that until I tried to put it back together. And being a novice welder, I made a mess of that poor rig, but I got it done. You got it done. I've used the term a liberal application of body filler. <laughs> <laughs> it weighs a little bit more than it used to, I take it. Yeah, and I, I've been fortunate to have a lot of understanding clients. Uh, again, being a guy living in his workshop for 10, 15 years, and the the clients that really stuck around, especially Victor, understood like they're watching me progress through all of these demands. And I mean, from welding lawn furniture back from being bent to building yeah bubble top show cars, it's been a it's been an an event. So he he's kind of become your your mentor or your enabler. A hundred. To... Yeah. Yeah. The dude that wouldn't let me quit because I've tried to throw in the bag a few times. I'm going to go back and work with my dad in construction. He's like, what? 
no, no, come to this job site and weld a gate. Seriously. What well, keeps you, you motivated? I mean, obviously you go from car to car and do a lot of fun stuff. But as you mentioned, sometimes it kind of, you start looking elsewhere. What, what's kept you motivated about still doing this and doing the show? Uh, I think I'm just a little bit on the spectrum. You know, I just can't sit still. It's just, <laughs> I, I don't have to motivate myself. I just simply can't stop. You, uh, car? Moved, okay. moved to, you moved to Mojave. And first off, uh, I think a lot of people want to know, how'd you talk the wife into that? Well, I didn't actually have to talk her into it. Uh, I I got the place about five years ago, and we've only been married three-ish, little give or take. But uh, we met out in the desert at an event. It's kind of a vetting thing. We've been we met through mutual friends, and it was just one of those things. Like I I, I do okay when it's 115 degrees, and even though she lived in Seattle at the time, she was feeling the same way, and I was like. Well, instead of moving to Los Angeles, you could just uh, move in with me and get married. <laughs> you True. romantic devil, you. That's yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I really lay it on. Yeah. Suave and dominator. Mm -hmm. But yeah. either way, I mean, we, we love it out here. It's a great place. So uh, how far are you from uh, Winfield? Five miles. He's Five miles, okay. Stand up tall on the porch. You can almost see him, Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's become a custom central now between you and, and Gene, huh? It's interesting because I I finally had a couple coins to rub together again. And Victor's like, now as you're getting a paycheck, you should buy a house and get married. <laughs> like, okay, I'll start with the house. <laughs> this happened to be on Realtor.com, of all things. It was available to anyone. And yeah. Wow. I... So talk a little bit about the relationship you have with Gene Winfield. Like anybody else, I, I built a car and took it to his car show. And uh, he was like, whoa, like what's this? Uh, George Barris as well. They were together at this car show. And what the heck? Like, who's this guy? And I'm like, hey, and face recognition, whatever. And I did a lot, a lot to show my cars when I was first starting. Bob's Big Boy in Burbank and anything local in the Valley. I, I was there with a car and business cards <laughs> trying to trying to get some work is that how you, is that how you got the tv show or how did that work out uh i was on another tv show and the fellow i'm working with brooks my producer he was just a cameraman on this uh you've heard of the monster garage monster house so this was a spin-off of that called monster nation and he was just the hired gun he was a camera guy looking at me building stuff and He's like, hey, I have another producer who wants to make a DVD. And that's what started the whole thing. We're wow. working together wow. for 20 years now. Yeah. Right place, right time. Exactly. Yeah. It's serendipity, synchronicity, whatever you want to call it. Well, whatever it is, your charisma is definitely there. And uh, the way you build a car, it's yeah different from everybody else. You're not building cookie cutter stuff like most. I mean, you got guys that are building some very beautiful cars. But yours are not along the same pathway. You, you're in, you're an innovator. I've Maybe. never followed the norm. I mean, that can be said for all aspects of, of what I've been up to. And, you know, a lot of guys like a conservative looking car and that's not me. So the TV show, fortunately, has given me that avenue to just get weird. Now, I was looking at a car that you're building now and uh, Volkswagen Power but a street rod front end and very pointed and, and thinned and it's cool. What, what is the goal? What, what is that? I, I don't know. I don't know how far you've gotten along with that car. I'm that's, just seeing that's, pictures. That's, that's the car that's going away today. That's Victor's car. And it was oh, okay. collaboration between him and I. So he's a guy who, he's, you know, he's always on his phone. He runs four businesses, right? He's always in this vehicle moving around and he daydreams about cars. So he's, got a whole rack of pictures fantasy concept roadsters right futuristic and you know with the 24 inch rims and super low nose and all that stuff so he brings me a nash metropolitan some uh studebaker rear fins the kind that screw on the hawk i guess uh edsel front grill <laughs> and a Volkswagen <laughs> chassis and some big wheels and tires and he's like let's make one build me a car okay <laughs> But wow. you've got the he he's got the the foresight 
but you take his dreams and make them a reality. Yeah, we have a real good relationship like that. It's just uh, at this point, 20, whatever, almost five years into it, you know, you read each other's minds. So it's kind of like that. Like, I know what he wants to see. And then he tells me something else. And then we do do it again over. <laughs> Ian, talk a little bit about when you first started bringing your cars or a car to a place like a Bob's Big Boy or to whatever else is local near you. And you didn't know yet what the reaction would be. Talk about about what the reaction was when people saw your cars and how were you surprised by that? Were you gratified by that? There was that thrill. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's the same thrill like a streaker would get when they run through a football stadium naked. <laughs> <laughs> I would pull into Bob's big boy. I built this ugly 56 Plymouth Belvedere. I put the, I chopped it super radical and put the roof on backwards and it was just the lines were all wrong. It was a hideous car. So I pull into Bob's Big Boy and, you know, ghetto lower, just heated springs, dropped to the ground, super low. And I pull in, it's all loud and dragging on the ground. And everybody's like, Ew, what was that? And one guy comes up and he's like, you must have a lot of confidence to drive that thing. And it like affected me. So I'm like, actually, okay. I don't, I didn't think that, but if that's the way you're seeing it, heck yeah. <laughs> whatever works you know yeah it's just i don't know i just i just always like the oddball stuff if you could build a car right now of your choice and your vision besides the international cab over you're working on what would it be again i really don't have a wish list this truck was presented to me so i'm all about it now um i've always wanted to do some kind of a motorhome thing that's, I guess, where the cabana car led into. Uh, didn't make it, just resources, time frame. We have, especially with the TV show, time frame is everything. We got to knock it out. So uh, do you remember Art Hemsel's motorhome, that giant Zeppelin thing? <laughs> oh, wow. Or Randy Grubb's deco liner, the big Dude, aluminum. That, one, that I don't remember, but I, I know Art. So, yeah, I remember I remember yeah, that. I saw that at Paso Robles, Roble, yeah, years ago, and I was just knocked out. Like, what? What a cool creation! Uh huh. I so, what's the, what's the next show you're going to be taking some wheels to? Uh, cruising Nationals, Santa Maria, West okay. Coast Customs. Oh, okay. And and what are you going to take? Do you know yet? Uh, maybe this car for that Victor's, if he can slam it in time, we'll see. But uh. Uh, Victor has a, a, a stable now, a literal herd of cars to choose from. So he always takes up two or three. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing you up there. My my goal for me is to get up there too. Yeah. It's a great show. I think that's my favorite show for sure. Just the cruise in. It's, it's a super chill yeah. environment. Yeah. And then Penny's always fun. For sure. And I can't believe uh, when they told me that I was going to be in their Hall of Fame, I thought wow. it was a big call. Wow, <laughs> like, congratulations. Yeah. I was inducted a few years back into the West Coast yeah. Customs Hall of Fame. Pretty That's crazy. Great. Yeah. They called wow. up and I'm like, yeah, prank call. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what you're building, like like I said, you're, you're an innovator. You're not following the herd. You're, you're doing something just like the, the first guys that started building customs. There was no template. You've made your own. That That's what's so amazing about uh, being able to hang out with Gene Winfield in his senior years. Because, like, the dude started it. Literally, him and his peers created it from it didn't exist before them. No, so you're, you're carrying on. The, you're carrying the torch because you I are the innovator. That. I'm real proud to that. This is my career. It's like, I'm not going to go work in fast food like I once dreamed I would. So I'll just keep building these cars. Wait, you dreamed that you would be working in fast food? Uh, any particular fast food restaurant? Actually, actually, in high school, I worked in a deli, an Italian deli in Millwood, New York. And I loved that job. Prepping sandwiches, doing the whole thing. I, I really did. I worked in the kitchen there for a while and catering. I really enjoyed that. From custom sandwiches to custom cars. I like it. Percent. Yeah, at least it gets you on motor trend. I don't think the sandwich thing would probably do that. Wait a minute. Yeah, a yeah, custom yeah. car that looks like a sandwich. Wait a minute. <laughs> I've got it. I was actually doing something on Facebook for a while, little while called Full Custom Kitchen. 
<laughs> Any, anything you could make in a coffee maker. When I was in my bachelorhood, uh, I lived in my shop and I was doing that seriously. I just, for a kick, I was making everything I could in a Mr. Coffee. <laughs> Just to prove it. Give, give me a, like what? Chicken soup? What can you put, make out of a Mr. Coffee? Hard boiled eggs. You can make pasta. You can make all kinds of soups. You can make potatoes. You could boil potatoes and mash them. You can make vegetables. You can do all kinds of business. Okay, Bob. I don't think we're going over to Ian's for dinner anytime soon. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Yeah. You I think we'll bring pizza. Pasta. I, could, I, could char I could charcoal grill a, a frozen pizza. I can, okay. I can on a no. Mr. Coffee. Oh, on a no, no, no. Grill. I also had a charcoal grill as well when I was really getting into it. But not a hibachi, a charcoal grill. Yeah. Full on Weber grill. Wow. Full service garage. Full service garage. Not only can you eat, but you can get a car at the same time. Full sure. service. Full service garage and chicken and, yeah. and dinner and kitchen and everything else. I like yeah, that. You, yeah, you built a car for a friend of mine, Jack Weimer. Uh, tell us that that truck was just. That was neat. And when I saw him driving it, it was like, wow. And also, uh, I don't know what what history goes with that Riviera you mentioned, but that was Jack's Riviera as well. Oh, okay. He okay. started that project and decided to pass. Yeah. But uh, the Econo line, he loved that Diora pickup, you know, made by the Alexander brothers. And mm -hmm. he's like, I, I don't want to make a copy. Anybody can make a replica. I want to do, you know, a, a version of that. And he had made this little scale model representing his lines on it and found that econo line with the cadillac front drive in the back and we just cut it up and made it happen that's good talk about your time frame like from the moment you get introduced to the car to the time you theoretically finish it what are we talking about because obviously we see it and unless it's a two or three parter you know it's done in an hour or an hour or two hours or three hours what what is your time frame usually to put these cars together it's all over the map. Um, the Victor Supercar, uh, not many people have seen that. That was a full season on one car. We experimented with that format. Uh, that took nine months, front to back. Uh, the Cabana car was about three weeks. That was pretty straight up. So it, it runs in between. I, I, I can't guess the average, maybe two or three months. And right, so the car that Victor's picking up now, how much time did you have in that one? Uh, well, we started that again. Uh, a lot of the way we film is we double or triple up projects that way if one is lagging we still have stuff to film so started with the cadillac uh while the cadillac was going on i got into victor's car bounced back and forth finished the caddy episode now i'm into the vw victor's car is going out so yeah it's kind of just a big mashup it, it's pretty hectic actually so you're building a car on spec basically like the cadillac no no specific customer if someone was watching the show, saw you build that, how would they buy that from you at the end? I haven't really pursued the, the sale of them. It's always about like, what, what am I going to do with not having this project around? Because a lot of them don't truly get finished, finished. Um, that oddball trike thing with the over the, over the head chassis, do you, you know that one? Uh, the, my buddy Eric that worked on that with me, I basically gave it to him for the cost of the parts. Um, the four wheel drive Pinto was gone in a trade uh, for another project. Uh, a fella I met in, in Iowa, uh, he got the yellow Volkswagen that was from last season. I was going to finish that this season. He was, he was really into VWs. You know, it's like the people that deserve them, I think, get them in the end. I don't really just say highest bidder type of thing. So you're not advertising them, it's just kind of word of mouth people finding it. Yeah, yeah. Or again, the right guy calls this this fella Corey. He's like, hey, check out the stuff I build. And I'm really into Volkswagens. I love that car. And we got to talking and yeah, he took it home. So is it true that the logo we see behind you was designed by you? No, no, no. Our friend oh. uh, Tony, our friend Tony designed this UFO thing. Uh, again, it, back and forth. He he showed me a, a couple fonts. I was like, you know, I want a flying saucer that glows in the dark. And yeah, he, we messed around. With it. Again, we had this skull, skull T-shirt design. Look, look kind of ominous, you know. And I'm like, let's do something fun and oddball. The uh, car you made the big canopy for the, the Thunderbird, if I remember correctly, very yeah. spacey. I mean, you filled the fender wells, smoothed the body back. Uh, is that one of Victor's cars? 
Yeah, that was his design from from the get go. Uh, in about 2004, that car was in my shop, and I had done a completely different treatment to it. Uh, the entire rear of the body, oh, it was like a transformer. The rear open, the front open, everything. It was like wide open, almost like a speedboat. And then he redesigned everything. That's when the fender wells got covered and the bubble top got made. Yeah. So if people want to find your show, they find it on Motor Trend now. Motor uh, Trend Plus. It's on Amazon as a rental, Amazon Prime. Uh, it's ar around the world. So, yeah, I don't even know all the networks. Yeah, nowadays, it seems to be interesting that they find it all. You could get it in so many different places now with streaming and everything else. Yeah, so as I understand, the uh, production company uh, got an agent and they're they're marketing it worldwide on different online platforms. Yeah. Wow. Oh, good. You'll be able to go to Botswana and they will know who you are. Seriously, South Africa. I get messages from all over the world. Um, Australia is a huge fan base. It's on their uh, seven mate channel. So uh, yeah, it's all over the place. Pretty neat. That's great. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's, that's good for you and good congratulations on the show and keeping it going. And, and again, we get to watch some of these great custom tidbits that you put together here and there it's so it's so much fun and it's amazing to watch how you'll split a fender in half widen it up put straps on it then putty it in or however you do it or uh you know it's it's always a lot of fun to watch yeah and it is literally just winging it i've had people critique my style and methods from from the start but like what you see is what you get. It's a guy rushing through the process to get his vision out there. So yeah, all the techie welding terms, et cetera, that people will bring up. It's like, what you see is what you get. It's me, the garage, just trying to slam something for entertainment value. And the dogs, we have to ask how the dogs are doing. Well, uh, we lost our dude, our number one, the cancer uh -huh. guy. So we got Lil, number two. She's here resting. And Blue, our new puppy's learning the ropes. There oh, you go. Look forward to making its debut on your show. He already did. Yeah, it's kind of like, dude, number one, he uh, he showed up on the very first episode. He came in. Like, that wasn't planned. And the same thing. We're like, well, maybe Blue wants to be involved. And you'll see on these episodes, he kind of runs in, looks, and he's out. He's not really the conversation. <laughs> Very cool. All right, Ian, uh, thanks for joining us on the show. It's been a lot of fun finding out a little bit more about uh, your program. And uh, it's just amazing to look at your work. Uh, again, a uh, reminder, you can check him out on uh, Motor Trend and all the places he mentioned earlier. You can check us out, of course, uh, on PowerTube TV. We have new episodes coming up every Wednesday, like we told you earlier, where this is our first episode. And it's going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you can join us again. That's Hot Rod Bob. That's Ian. I'm Randy. We'll see you next time on the Talking About Cars podcast. Every Wednesday, a new show. We'll see you then. Thank you.